Welcome back to EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and this is 10 cards you should be putting in your Commander decks. That's right, it's back. It has been two years since I have done this series. I retired it about two years ago. Obviously, a lot has changed since then. I'm going back to it for a couple of reasons. Reason number one, a lot has changed in the last two years, namely the amount of subscribers I have, right? I have double the subscribers I have when I stopped doing this series, so I probably have a whole lot of viewers and subscribers that don't even know that I was doing this. But also, I really think the format needs suggestions like this. I'm suggesting less obvious things, right? And please don't tell me in the comments that these cards are not optimal or they're not efficient enough or whatever. That's not why I'm suggesting them. Although some of these are in fact just really underplayed cards that I think deserve more love because they're fantastic. A lot of them will be really niche. They fall into all sorts of different categories. They're just cards that might or might not fit into a deck that you currently have and you possibly have never ever heard of them before. That that's why I did this series in the first place, and that is why I am revisiting it now. So I will start out with the first card suggestion I ever made on my channel and Zarin Runes. That's right. The very first 10 cards video that I did over three years ago, this was the first card I suggested. And it's the reason I started doing that series because I'm like, man, this card seems pretty darn good and I never see it from one of the worst sets of all time, Homelands. Maybe that's why. Two red, red enchantment. As it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Creatures of the chosen type don't untap during their untap steps. So this is a fantastic, I guess, stacks piece you could refer to it as in mono red. Mono red's okay at stacks pieces. It's not super great. I honestly think that red can sometimes have trouble dealing with creatures. Like if you're in a mono red deck, especially an indestructible creature or a creature with like a bigger than 13 toughness can be really, really hard for you to deal with. This is a way to deal with it, right? And then obviously works extra good against against certain tribes, and of course, tribal decks are everywhere. It's rare that you would play a commander game without anyone playing a tribal deck, and this can completely shut down one of your opponents, obviously, right? It's gonna make their lives really, really difficult. But also, you can just shut down one single creature like your opponent's commander. That's where I like this. You know, this card might look like, oh, it's very specific in what it's doing, and there's a lot of games where it might not be great. No, you just pick your opponent's commander, right? The, whoever's got the scariest commander on the table, someone's playing a Korvald, you just choose Dragon. Hopefully, you're not playing any dragons. If your other opponents are, they're going to get hit as well. It's very easy for you to just pick a popular creature type and you're guaranteed to get a few with this. I think it's a great card and should probably be in a lot more decks. Let's talk about Abduction. Two blue, blue enchantment aura, enchant creature. When Abduction enters the battlefield, untap enchanted creature. That is a significant. You control enchanted creature. That's even more significant. And when enchanted creature dies, return that card to the battlefield under onus control. This card is doing so much and this card is, as I say all the time, in that category of I can play it on my own creatures or I can play it on my opponents, right? I love cards like that. They're almost modal cards in a commander game because depending on the situation, maybe I want to play it on my opponent's creatures or maybe I want to play it on mine. Now, of course, you want to play it on your opponent's creature because you're stealing your opponent's creature, right? Now, when it dies, they will get it back. That is important to note, but that can be, uh, you know, it'll soften the blow a little, right? Sometimes stealing your opponent's commander can get you a little bit in the doghouse here. It's like, eh, you'll get it back. Don't worry. I'm just going to board for a little while. But also I like casting this on my own creature, right? And in fact, I had this in my Rain Academy Chancellor deck. I mean, I could obviously cast it on my opponent's creature. Hey, you got a Blightsteel Colossus. I'll take that. But typically I would just cast it on my own creatures. Of course, I want it on my commander. Why would I do that? Well, I want my commander enchanted, but also when my commander dies, I get it back into play. So if you plan on your commander being a target, this is a great card to put on it because you'll get it back back after removal. It also untaps as well. Keep that in mind. So if I'm in an Arcanus the Omnipotent deck and I have a commander that I want to be tapping to use its ability, I tap my commander, draw three cards, then I cast Abduction on it, untap it, draw three more cards, of course, and also if it happens to die, which it likely will be a target for removal, I'll get it back into play. So pretty good fit in that deck as well. One of the most underrated counterspells in the format, in my opinion, I have this in a couple of decks, Abjur. One 
one blue mana instant as an additional cost to cast this spell. Sacrifice a blue permanent. That's pretty high cost and just counter target spell though. So this is a one blue mana hard counter spell with no stipulations. It just counters everything. How many counter spells out there cost one mana and can counter anything? You got to sacrifice a blue permanent, but typically if you're in a blue deck, that isn't very difficult and can actually be an advantage to you. So the first place that I would throw this card is in any deck where you are creating blue tokens. I'm sure there's a few commanders out there like that. It's very easy to just sacrifice one of those tokens, right? One mana hard counter spell, and all I gotta do is sacrifice one of my fairies piece of cake slam dunk in those decks in my opinion i also really like this and obviously a deck where you want to be sacrificing stuff that's why i have this in my denic deck my denic of course is a blue permanent and is also a permanent that i want to sacrifice so that i can get it back from the graveyard that's why this is in there i also have generally a kind of sacrifice theme obviously because i want creatures to be going to graveyards so i can sacrifice another blue creature if my commander's already been flipped over and then i will get the trigger off my commander right so it works in both of those scenarios. Really, really underrated counterspell in the format, I think. Let's talk about Anna Sanctuary. Two and a green enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control a blue or black permanent, target creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. If you control a blue permanent and a black permanent, that creature gets plus five, plus five until end of turn instead. Wow. So for only three mana every single turn, you could be giving your commander, which is likely going to be blue and black, if you are in all of these colors, right? A salt eye deck is going to have all those colors and almost guaranteed, I guess, unless you're playing a Tassiger deck, you're going to have a commander that is both blue and black. So you will be able to get a plus five, plus five every turn. Don't need to put any mana into this. It's just a free trigger every turn. I really like these enchantments that sit on the battlefield and just give us effects every turn on our upkeep or on our end step. And we don't have to put anything into them. It's just a freebie. Obviously you can give this bump to any creature and obviously you don't even need your commander on the battlefield. You just need a blue permanent and a black one. But in a Saltite deck, that should not be very difficult. There are certain commanders where this is an absolute slam dunk in my opinion. Opinion. For example, Ukima, Stalking Shadow, which is a commander that you want to be bumping its power, obviously, right? And of course, because of the partner with Kazor, you're going to have green in the deck, right? So you have exactly the colors you need in the deck, but you don't even need the Kazur in play. You only need the Ukima in play because the Ukima is the blue and black that you're looking for. So it's very easy to make your unblockable Okima 7-7. Seven, seven? That sounds pretty good, right? Slam dunk in that deck, in my opinion. Probably can go on a bunch of others as well. Let's talk about Aftershock. Two red, red, sorcery, destroy target artifact, creature, or land. Aftershock deals three damage to you. So versatile removal. In mono red, I think that's super underrated. This hits an artifact or creature or land. Of course, the biggest issue you're going to have with this card is, do I want to use it on that creature? Because I have another opponent that has a really powerful land that I want to get off the table, right? Versatile removal can actually cause that issue sometimes for you. This, though, is a very significant card because it's a mono red card that just straight up destroys a creature and as i've already said even in just this video sometimes red can have issues with that it actually isn't the best color ever at just dealing with a really big scary creature this is one way to do it it is sorcery speed that's unfortunate but we are limited in the colors we play in this format and this is actually a pretty decent removal spell to just straight up destroy a creature in mono red and also has a couple other great options right Aether barrier two and a blue enchantment whenever a player casts a creature spell that player sacrifices a permanent unless they pay one. So of course, this is a symmetrical effect. I like symmetrical effects. They don't do this nearly as much anymore. This is just a great, you know, some people would call it stacks. I would say more tax, obviously. You're just forcing players to pay an extra one whenever they cast a creature spell. Now, this can be used in a couple of different scenarios. Obviously, if you're not casting creature spells at all, it's not going to hurt you. It's just going to hurt your opponents. But I, again, also like it in a theme. And for anyone out there who has a blue deck that is sacrificing a lot, this actually can be a benefit for you because it becomes a sack outlet, right? I cast a creature spell. Hey, I have to sacrifice a permanent unless I pay one. Well, looks like I have a hatching plans in play. I'll sacrifice that because I want to, right? So can be a little bit of a funny sack outlet in blue if you're looking for that as well. A card that I've talked about on my channel a few times, one of my all-time favorites, Aether Flash, two red, red enchantment. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, it deals two damage to it. Again, 
with the symmetrical effects that I love so much. I just think cards like this make things interesting in a commander game. You gotta actually think about it, right? I can't just run out my Avenger of Zendikar because of course all those plant tokens will die unless I have some way to put two counters on them at instant speed. I just talked about this with Ty Joaquin, a commander that would love an effect like this. There's lots of commanders out there in the non-combat damage theme now where this might be a great fit. It is just a great card though for hating on token strategies. Like you got your opponents that are having rat tokens or sapperling tokens or goblin tokens. Man, this will just shut them down, right? And if it's not really hurting you at all, great card to slot in there. So this is definitely a card that works really, really well in certain strategies, but also can probably go in any deck and put in some work. Let's talk about Altar of Bone, a very underrated tutor in the format. I'm sure a lot of people have never seen before. Green and a white sorcery as an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature. So again, we're in the sacrifice theme here, sort of. Search your library for a creature card, veal it and put it in your hand, then shuffle. So I know people will say Eladamri's Call is just straight up better than this because it's the same casting cost, doesn't have the sacrifice and is also an instant and you would be correct if we're just talking about which card is better Eladamri's call is better but this is another option we can only have one card of each in our deck this is a highlander format guys one thing i heard all the time when i did this series before is why would i play this card when i have another option that's better you would play it because you only can have one of those cards in your deck are you going to draw your Eladamri's call in every single game you play in your white green deck not likely alter of bone is another option yes possibly a worse option but it is another option and can be if you want to be sacrificing stuff maybe a better option right there are situations again where you actually might want to be sacrificing your stuff so it actually might be an upside for you it certainly is though a pretty good option let's talk about aligned hedron network a new ish card i guess you know when i talk about cards that are newer and older most of the cards i'll be talking about on this series are old from my perspective in other words they're not modern legal right for me i separate old and new from modern and not modern but of course the modern format goes all the way back to the early 2000s so at this point it's really old this card is pretty old and it definitely is not seen in the commander format that much. And I think it's actually pretty darn good. Four mana artifact, when it enters the battlefield, exile all creatures with power five or greater until aligned hedron network leaves the battlefield. There is a whole bunch of reasons why you might want to be playing this card. It is first of all, a colorless board wipe kind of. Obviously it only deals with big creatures, but of course that's likely what you want to be dealing with, right? Just having a four mana card that can deal with all the big creatures on the battlefield can be a really big advantage, especially if it doesn't hurt you. And in fact, even outside of a colorless deck, maybe I'm just in that low power toughness theme and I need a card that is going to deal with the big creatures. This actually might be a great fit because it's not going to hit any of your creatures, right? It is temporary, sure, but that also can be an advantage, right? There is ways that you can abuse the sort of blinking effect of this as well. And of course, it is stapled on a permanent, right? This is not like a sorcery. This is an actual artifact that I can blink, recur out of my graveyard. I'm in an artifact theme, all that kind of stuff, right? You can get into some real shenanigans with this card as well. It certainly is unique in what it's doing. It is exiling and also it's not targeting, right? It gets around everything. There is no way for your opponent to not have their creature exiled with this if its power is five or greater, right? So it is pretty efficient in what it does. Lastly, I'll talk about a card from an actual commander set. Commander 2013, Act of Authority. This is a card I used to see quite a bit when I first started playing the commander format and I never see it anymore. Again, I will actually be talking about cards from actual commander sets from time to time because again, 2013, that was a long time ago, right? That was more than 10 years ago. There's a lot of commander players out there that may never have seen this card and that's why I do this series. To bring up these cards you guys might not have ever seen before and this is a very interesting one. One white, white enchantment when it enters the battlefield, you may exile target artifact or enchantment. So if we just stop there, we have a three mana card, again, stapled on an enchantment that can be really relevant, right? Maybe I'm just in enchantment tribal and yeah, I could put some other effect that deals with artifacts enchantment in my deck, but I'm going to put this one because I want my stuff stapled on enchantments as much as possible because I'm going to get a card draw or I'm going to get some other effect off of it or I just want lots of enchantments in play, right? There's lots of reasons to do that in an enchantment tribal theme. Maybe I can get enchantments back out of my graveyard, right? All of that. There's lots of reasons to play enchantment and artifact removal on an enchantment. 
land. It obviously exiles, which means it's going to deal with pretty much anything in an artifact or enchantment form. However, also at the beginning of your upkeep, you may exile target artifact or enchantment. If you do, its controller gains control of act of authority. So this can be two removals stapled on one card, right? So this guy comes down, I exile someone's artifact or enchantment. Then on my upkeep, I get to exile another artifact or enchantment. Now, of course, then I got to donate it, right? I got to give it to that person. That's not great. However, of course, in the commander format, there's lots of great ways to use that to your advantage. I'll give a bunch of reasons why you might want to play this card. First of all, I put this in a deck, a, a blinking kind of deck, I'll just call it. I had cards like Blood Clock in there. So I wasn't really blinking. I was returning stuff to my hand, right? Because Blood Clock says at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player returns a permanent they control the owner's hand unless they pay two. So both of these trigger at the same time and I will stack it appropriately so that I target something with my active authority and then my Blood Clock goes on the stack, will resolve first and I will bounce my active authority to hand. The trigger is still on the stack, right? It does not go away as I've talked about on my channel so many times. Removing the source of a ability does not remove it from the stack. So the active authority, even though it has been bounced to my hand, the ability still in the stack and when it resolves, will exile whatever that artifact or enchantment I was targeting, but it will not swap control because of course it's in my hand. So how am my opponent going to gain control of it? So that is a way for me to sort of work around the whole letting my opponent gain control of it issue. Maybe you want to donate this to your opponent, right? You're playing a Zedru deck, right? Obviously pretty good fit there. And obviously there are other commanders as well where you might want to be donating stuff. Maybe you don't have any artifacts or enchantments. That is another funny way to use this. Now I will point out and this does happen from time to time, your opponent can just exile this, right? If you donate this to your opponent on their upkeep, they get to choose an artifact or enchantment. And instead of picking something else on the battlefield, they can just choose to exile this with its own ability. However, there's always lots of great artifacts and enchantments on the battlefield, and they're probably not gonna do that. And of course, the best way to use this is just the political way. You're just striking deals with people. That's why this is a great card in the commander format. There's a lot of really neat situations for a card like this, white removal, obviously, is insanely good in the format now. It is kind of tough to find room for a card like this if it doesn't specifically fit with what you're doing, but maybe you can give it a try. I think it's a pretty neat card in the commander format. There you go. 10 cards that you guys should give a try in your commander decks. Some of these are really unpopular for not really any good reason, in my opinion. Some of them are very archetype specific. Some of them are just maybe forgotten about and I'm giving you a reminder. I will just make a note about the prices here. And in my original series, I had a lot of people telling me, hey, how about you post the prices? And I did start doing that, but I didn't love doing it. And the reason why is because prices change all the time, right guys? Funny enough, if you go watch some of those old videos, whatever price I posted on those videos is probably completely inaccurate. Prices go up, they go down. I will give the perfect example of Fervent Charge, I guess, I don't have to recommend this card now because everyone knows about it. I recommended this card in one of my very first 10 cards video and it was like a dollar or something like that. Like nobody played this card. And of course, then Ishin came out and this card went from a dollar to like $20. So if somebody was watching that old 10 cards video, they'd go, what is this guy talking about? He's a liar. That card's not a dollar. How dare you? And in fact, I did have a couple people mention that in videos after they had been out for a year or two, right? So that is why I will not be posting prices. I will, however, be avoiding just really expensive cards. I don't think I'm going to touch any card that's over like $5. And in fact, most of the cards I mentioned in this video are under a dollar. I'm mentioning underwhelming cards for the most part, so they should be cheap. From time to time, you will get a card that's pretty expensive. And yes, that's maybe why it isn't played in the format because it's expensive. Nevertheless, I am going to make the recommendations because you might want to run out there and buy it because it is a perfect fit in your deck. And if by chance, you're in the market for a t-shirt. I also, in the link below, have my Into the AM link and the promo code EDH deck. Feel free to grab one of those. It helps support the channel. I've had a lot of people asking for me to bring back this series. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people excited about it. And here we are. I'm doing it again. Hope you guys enjoy the suggestions. I'll see you in the next episode. And thanks for tuning in.